this has been a very difficult year and even more so for our elderly population. And to talk more about that, joining us now on the Oakland County Megacast is Dr. Shasta Kozmi. She's the president and founder of the uh, Upper Car Senior Care Center here in West Bloomfield. Great to have you with us. Hi, thank you so much. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you as well. I need to ask just off the top of the show, 2021 is about the vaccine. What does that word vaccine mean to you and members of your team? Is it hopeful? It is. I mean, um, so one thing is, is that even though I do have a medical background, I did not practice medicine. I didn't go through the normal residency program, whereas my husband did. He's an intensivist. So he got the vaccine actually uh, three weeks ago. Uh, he was one of the first to get it here in Michigan. And um, I think after literally from March of 2020 um, till when they started telling the dates of that he would finally get the vaccine, I actually saw hope in his eyes. So that was actually kind of nice because for the last uh, year, it was just, uh, you know, I've never seen him that down and that frustrated um, in his medical career. So it was great to see that. And that's what we're, you know, we're hoping where I think the 2021, the word should be hope. Um, and that is exactly what um, we are. We're definitely all hopeful that this will, you know, kind of turn things around. And she said, tell us more about your senior care center because it's different from other ones. Right, so one of the things is, is our senior care uh, center, which is a um, non-medical senior care company um, in the heart of West Bloomfield. And we're serving the needs of elderly ethnic minorities. Uh, about 10 years ago, my father was diagnosed with a debilitating neurological condition. Um, and my mother-in-law had come to live with me as well. And in order to balance both households, we tried local senior care companies. Unfortunately, um, you know, they weren't able to meet the cultural demands of my aging parents, especially my mother-in-law who had a lot of um, language barriers. So I decided, you know, if I ever get to that point in time, um, I will start a senior care company, which will meet those cultural uh, demands and needs. However, in that process, you know, being someone, you know, who grew up here um, locally, uh, we noticed that a lot of people needed affordable senior care. Um, as you know, senior care, I mean, if you don't, uh, is quite expensive. Um, it's an out-of-pocket expense and um, many families struggled with that. So we wanted to make something affordable that all families could use that kind of luxury um, service. Uh, so your senior care center, is it uh, one that people actually live in or do you just hire individuals to go to homes of those uh, in need? individuals who go to the home. But one of the other things that we got very lucky with was because we were such a unique company, local facilities in West Bloomfield were very um, excited about the idea. So what, I'm sorry, I think we got cut, I think we got cut off there. But what we ended up doing was that local facilities utilize our uh, care as well. So our caregiver can go into the facility and you know, often companion care or patient sitting services uh, so that the family can get some type of respite. So it is non-medical senior care. We're going into the home. However, because we're such a unique company, we are able to have our aides go into these facility prior to COVID, of course. Now with COVID restrictions, I mean, it's a little different. We do have one or two of our aides going to facilities in and around West Bloomfield and Novi. Um, where, you know, the caregivers of the same cultural uh, background as our client, and then they can offer, you know, some type of um, care over there. Uh, because one of the things with all elderly, but in particular elderly ethnic minorities, is the um, isolation that they face. So, an isolation leads to depression, and, you know, of course, it's just kind of then a snowball effect. So, um, this kind of, you know, can alleviate those uh, issues. So how vital has it been for members of your team to be able to connect with some of your elderly patients during this time? I mean, I think one of the, you know, as a business owner, there's every single day you wake up and you're like, am I, do I really want to be doing this? <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a struggle every day. I have young kids too. So 
it's always a struggle. However, with the pandemic, with the onset of the pandemic, we started seeing that our services were greatly needed um, and they were vital, vital to families because they knew, okay, their loved one was going, their loved one had a caregiver in the home, getting the groceries, doing everything that they were, that they could not do because families are split apart at this time, not even if they're living in the same, you know, city as their loved one. So now you have a caregiver going, providing all the things that you usually would have done and they have peace of mind um, that, you know, mom and dad are okay. Um, and then thankfully, knock on wood, since the pandemic, we had zero issue with COVID um, and COVID uh, transmission within our clients and our caregivers, because we we're very careful uh, with, you know, we made sure it was one client per one caregiver. And, and so when you're doing that, are you making sure everyone is being tested? How has that worked for your team? One of the great things was that when um, the pandemic hit, Oakland County actually for small businesses had given out kits to reopen the businesses once, you know, things were, you know, looking a little bit more perspectival, especially since the spring was coming around. So um, they gave us these great kits They had infrared thermometers, they had hand sanitizers, gloves, which we were able to get a lot of PPEs. Uh, one of my friends actually was in the fat was a fashion designer out in LA in California. He kind of flipped his business and started making PPEs. So we were able to get a lot of PPEs, uh, gowns, gloves, masks, etc., and able to distribute that not only to our aides but to our clients as well. As for testing, Walgreens, CVS has been great um, in that sense. And then two of my friends have um, urgent cares. Uh, uh, Telegraph and Ma Maple, I'm Cura, and they do a lot of the testing as well. And with that, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about your, your patients or even your team with the vaccine? Do you think they're going to be some of the first ones to get them? Has anyone received it yet other than your husband? No, actually, no one has received it yet because, you know, a, they're, the, I think the first responders are getting them first. And then, of course, those within the hospital unit, I think this is where somewhere where the distribution is going to be tricky because so far, aside from the fact if they're in an assisted living or a nursing home, I do believe patient population above 65 have received. However, the general population has not, except I think in Florida and I think in Texas they started, in Harris County from what I believe. Um, but people are on wait lists. Uh, currently, I was yesterday on the Department of health and I did not see one currently for um, home health aid workers. However, you know, we're hopeful that within the next couple of weeks or months, we at least will get on a wait list for that because we, even though the healthcare workers are first responders, um, our aides, you know, are, but I just think it's the availability of the vaccine. Um, I know the big house has opened up the stadium for a vaccination distribution. I think uh, Michigan State has done it as well, but I'm not sure of what, you know, who's in line and, um, you know, how we're all going to get the vaccine because, again, it's about distribution. Each one, Pfizer and Moderna, both have different, um, you know, kind of refrigeration, uh, you know, storage capabilities. And based on that, it's just going to be on which one you know, they're going to get. And it, it, she said, uh, one of the things that we've heard throughout this pandemic is the difficulty in finding employees. Yeah. What's this been like for you? Because on top of someone that, you know, not only can care for your, your type of patient, but you're also looking for individuals that speak the language as well. Yeah. So we were lucky. Initially in the pandemic, there were a few of, especially the culturally similar caregivers who did not want to work. Um, they were very luck reluctant to get come out because they're again within that community itself. There's a lot of, um, you know, kind of false stories, uh, the fake news circulating there. So you kind of had to tell them, no, listen, you know, the virus is not going to be combated by taking turmeric in your tea every day. It's going to have to be, you know, based on, you know, kind of six feet separation, hand sanitizers, and all of that, and trying to explain that to them was um, a tad difficult. However, once they were re reassured and once they noticed that they were able to go in the homes and they were not getting affected, then that was not so much of an issue. Uh, we were very lucky in that sense. 
Um, and then, of course, because of the economy, a lot of people do want to work. Um, they need, you know, a lot of other uh, sectors were affected. Maybe their spouse had lost a job, so now they became the sole bread earner. So we had, we were lucky in that sense, knock on wood, that, you know, we didn't have that much of an issue until uh, initially the first reluctancy, of course, with some of the fake, uh, you know, stories going around of how to, you know, of what this virus can and cannot do. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a crazy time, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. It really uh, has. She's the cosme with me here on the Oakland County Mega Cash. She's the president and founder for the Apnacar Senior Care Organization. And Shasta, what about uh, your clients, the their family members and the elderly themselves? Have you been talking to them about the vaccine? What's been the feedback in that arena? So one of the good, one of the great things is is that a lot of those uh, a lot of my clients or children are physicians themselves. So they were able to get the vaccine and they were, you know, telling their parents, but because they were physicians, they were isolating themselves from their loved one, from their mom and dad. So again, our services became crucial to them. Whereas maybe, you know, some families who did not need the services because they were, be, they were even, even those clients of ours who were able to work from home, they couldn't be, phys even though they physically were there, they could not go and, you know, leave their Zoom meetings or what have you. So, you know, our services became more vital in that sense. Um, whereas, you know, initially when I thought the pandemic hit, I was like, oh no, how are we going to kind of pivot ourselves because we may end up going, you know, down in volume and down in numbers, but we had the opposite effect. We actually end up going, ended up going up in numbers, I think just because families knew they had to isolate. They could not, uh, you know, integrate or meet with their loved ones. So they, um, hired our caregivers who were tested and who were sent in to the clients. And we kept one caregiver to one client to ensure, you know, we could kind of follow these vectors and see where they're going and uh, make sure that there was no transmission. So we were very lucky. So when you started this company, it was long before a pandemic. Yeah. So <laughs> going through this, and as you mentioned, you're also a mom. Yeah. So what has this been like for you as the president and founder of this company? I mean, my kids were always adjusted because I always worked with the phone as my literally home office. So I would use the phone to constantly contact my clients, my aides. So they're very good. They know, okay, mama's on the phone. They know not to kind of make noise. I mean, what the, two out of three of them are pretty good at following that. That's my third one just, you know, is hyper and off the walls anyway. So he just kind of doesn't understand that. But, you know, it's um, they're very well adjusted children in that sense. So they're really good about, you know, my time sometimes being taken away. But I think one of the most difficult things was the um, online school because uh, my two older ones, you know, they're in high school. So I think in just in general, they're a tad more independent. My youngest started middle school and that was an adjustment for him and an adjustment for me because I had to spend a little bit more time with them. But then the pandemic kind of hit and it was like, I really couldn't dedicate that much time. And initially when the pandemic hit, because my husband was getting literally was going off into a war with no equipment because they honestly did not equip them um, well in the beginning. And so he decided, your he's like, you know, send your kids to my, he was like, send them to grandma's. My mom lives 15 minutes away from me. So the kids ended up going to my grandma's for all, to my mom's for almost two months. Yeah, because he was like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know uh, what's gonna happen to me. We can't expose the kids. I don't know what's going on. So just send them there, <coughs> isolate them. And then, um, you know, we'll hope for the best. So we brought them back middle of, yeah, end of May, end of May, they came back. So it's just <coughs> another minute or two with you here on the Oakland County Mega, uh, Mega Cast. Uh, with that, um, going forward, yeah. do you think this is going to be a service that's going to be more in demand? as we continue to navigate COVID-19 and the crisis? Yeah, I mean, I always call it the silver tsunami. This is one of the next, I mean, it's a huge public health crisis as is, which is really not discussed many times, but you have a huge aging population and another working force coming up. Now, you know, um, 
I was born in 1974, so I'm supposedly a Gen Xer. So what the issue is, is that we're like this huge sandwich generation where we have these young, we have these children, then we're managing our careers and then our parents. And one of the other things is, is that it's, again, very expensive. Senior care in this country is a very expensive, um, you know, service. And unfortunately, it's all out of pocket. Um, and I always try to reiterate that to families. You know, my dad had saved up his retirement. I mean, he had a good cushion amount of money. However, living in his home, being sick for almost 12 years, he depleted through that. Um, and it was, you know, but he went as he wished and in peace, but not every family has that luxury. And one of the things is, is that we have tried to keep it as affordable so everybody in the community can afford this service. Um, I don't think any family member should be reprimanded for wanting to take care of their loved one at home. And I think it should be an affordable service. I think people should be able to access it. Um, and one of the things that you will hear in 2020, one is um, accessibility to these type of services. And I think we need to really, as a community, as a whole, we need to make this um, service very accessible. So yeah, I do, uh, going forward, of course, I think, you know, um, these services are going to be needed and um, quality, quality care at affordable prices, you know, um, is something that we strive for. And throughout this pandemic, the one thing that has come to light is uh, the need for the elderly, like yeah. you were just mentioning. And what are your thoughts on how this virus has ravaged the elderly population, not just here in the state of Michigan, but throughout the country? I, I think one of the things was was that, like, so my brother worked, worked at um, Henry Fortis in security, and he was saying the thing that he would see so often was A, the frustration of the family because now they could not do their last goodbyes as usual. Um, and then them, the elderly being in that isolated state and the fear that he would see in their eyes. Um, yesterday he was describing it to me and I was just, uh, you know, it gave me goosebumps. Like he was like, there was such fear in their eyes and, you know, there was no one to comfort them. Um, I think even, you know, uh, even with having the caregiver in the home, I think just because of hospital protocols, that is one definitely thing that um, is scary, is that the isolation that the elderly have felt, um, social isolation, and of course, you know, not being in familiar surroundings, I think causes a lot of anxiety for them as well. And um, that is what one thing that is definitely changed a lot um, with the pandemic is the social isolation, which is leading to a lot of other issues, uh, mental health and physical health issues as well. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been sad to watch yeah. as well. Yeah. And, and Chasta, before we let you go, if someone is interested in trying to find out more about the services that you offer, where can they get that information? They can go to our website, upnugharhomecare.com, or they can call us at 248-325-9028. Our offices are um, on West Maple Road on the Tambark office village um, here in West Bowfield on uh, Maple and Orchard. Uh, you know, and we're open. I mean, it's a family owned and operated business. We're always there to answer your call. Any questions, even if you don't want to use our services. I mean, that's what we're here for. We're a community organization, uh, community-based um, for every member of the West Bloomfield uh, community. Well, we appreciate your time and also appreciate what you're doing for the elderly population here in our area. Thank you so much and a happy new year. And again, let's just, you know, hope for the best and, uh, you know, stay socially distanced and wear your mask and wash your hands. <laughs> Very much so. It's it, it, like you said, the vaccine is hope, yes. but we are still in the midst of this crisis. Yes. yes well, Shasta, thank you again for your time. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you again. Yeah.